بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Today we will see the last part of the exponential functions which is part 5 Let's begin with the first problem f of g and h are three functions defined as f of x is e to the power x, g of x is lin x, and h of x is e to the power minus x. And the question is to study the variations of the three functions f, g, and h, then draw the representative curves separately. Try to do it alone. Now for the first function which is f, the limit at minus infinity is 0 and the limit at plus infinity is plus infinity and in fact this was memorized by heart. Well f prime of x is e to the power x, this is positive so we can tell from here that f is strictly increasing and this would be the table, the domain, it goes from negative infinity to positive infinity. f prime is positive so f increases. The limit at negative infinity is 0, and the limit at positive infinity is positive infinity. So this is the table of variations of the exponential function, and this would be its graph. Remember, it has a horizontal asymptote, which is the x-axis. Now let's continue talking about the g. Well, the limit at 0 plus of lin x is negative infinity, and the limit of lin x as x tends to plus infinity is plus infinity. This also was memorized by Hart. Well, g prime of x is 1 over x, and 1 over x is strictly positive here, because x is always positive, it's strictly greater than 0, so g is strictly increasing. And this would be the table, the domain is 0 open, plus infinity, it's shaded at 0, g prime is positive, so g is increasing, it increases from negative infinity to positive infinity. The limit at 0 plus is negative infinity, and the limit at plus infinity is positive infinity. And this would be its curve. Now we can see from here that the curve of uh, f and the curve of g are somehow symmetric. In fact, they are symmetric with respect to the first bisector, with respect to the line with equation y equals x. Now for h, the limit at uh, negative infinity is positive infinity because e to the power minus minus infinity is e to the power plus infinity, which is plus infinity. And the limit of e to the power negative infinity is 0. Well, h prime of x, the derivative of this function, remember this is of the form e to the power u, so its derivative is u prime e u. It's negative, so h is strictly decreasing. This would be the table. The domain is from negative infinity to positive infinity. This is a decreasing function. It decreases from positive infinity to a zero. The limit at negative infinity is positive infinity. It's it's here, and the limit at positive infinity is 0, and it's somewhere here. Well, this would be the curve. We can also see that the curve of h and the curve of f are also symmetric. In fact, they are symmetric with respect to the y-axis. Now, let's see miscellaneous 2. The curve C at right is the representative curve of a function f, which is defined on minus infinity plus infinity as f of x equals ax plus b into e to the power minus x, where a and b are two real numbers. Now, a is a point whose coordinates are negative 2, 0, and b is a point whose coordinates are 0, 2, as you see here on the graph. The first part states to find the explicit form of f of x, and explicit form means we need to find f of x in terms of x. In other words, we need to find a and b. Try to do it alone. Take your time. Uh, well, if we begin by point b because it's easier, what do we mean by b belongs to c? This means that f of 0 is 2. And if we go back to f of x and we replace each x by 0, we get a b e to the power 0 is 2, and e to the power 0 is 1, so b is 2. So from here we can tell what is b. Now for the second point, which is a negative 2, 0, from here we can also state that f of negative 2 is 0, 
we go back to f of x, we replace each x by negative 2, we get minus 2a plus 2e to the power 2 is 0, while e to the power 2 is never 0, this means that minus 2a plus 2 is 0, or a is 1. So by now I know that b is 2, a is 1, we replace them here to get the explicit form of f of x. So f of x is ax, and a is 1, so this would be x, plus b, and b is 2 from here, so this would be x plus 2 into e to the power minus x. Now the second part asks to set up the table of variations of f. Try also to do it alone. Try to benefit from the figure. Well, this is the table of variations. The domain of definition is negative infinity, positive infinity. We can see from the graph that the curve increases then decreases. So this would be positive and the other part would be negative increases decreases well the limit at minus infinity when x tends to minus infinity it's far away down so it will be minus infinity and the limit at plus infinity when x is plus infinity the curve is strictly above the x-axis so the limit is zero now when x is negative one we go back to the explicit form f of negative one is going to be e so when x is minus one f of x is now let's see the third miscellaneous question. The curve at right is the representative curve of a function f which is defined as follows, where a, b, and c are three real numbers. And we know that a is a point whose coordinates are negative 1, 0, b is a point with coordinates 0, 1, and e with coordinates 1, 3. And we also know that t is tangent to c at point e. Now, the first question asks to find f prime of x in terms of a, b, c, and x. This is f of x. Try to find its derivative. Well, this is of the form u times v. So we apply u prime v plus v prime u. And remember here, with the exponential function, try always to factorize. If we take e minus x from here and e minus x from there as a common factor, what remains is this expression. We try to rearrange the expression, x squared alone, x alone, and constants alone. So this is f prime of x in terms of a, b, c, and x. Now the second part asks again to find the explicit form of f of x. Remember the explicit form of f of x means we need to write f of x in terms of x. So in other words, we need to find small a, small b, and small c. Well, try to benefit from the coordinates of a, b, and e, and from this piece of information. Try to do it alone. Let's begin. Well, b, 0, 1 belongs to c. This means that f of 0 is 1. If we go back to f of x, we replace each x by 0, we get c e to the power 0 is 1, so c is 1. Try always to begin with points where the abscissa is 0 because these are going to be the easiest points. Well, a negative 1, 0 also belongs to the curve, so f of negative 1 is 0. We replace each x here by negative 1, and we state that the answer is equal to 0. This is what we will have. Well, e is never 0, so we can say that a minus b plus 1 is 0 just by replacing c by 1 from the previous part. Well, pay attention here. The curve c doesn't pass through e, so we cannot say that e belongs to c. But we know that the tangent t passes through the two points e and b. And we know also from previous classes that the slope of the tangent is f prime of x b. So we try first to find the slope of t, which is yE minus yB over xE minus xB, because t passes through the two points B and E, and just by replacing we get 2. We replace the coordinates of E and the coordinates of B here, so we get 2. 
Uh, well, in this case, the slope of the tangent is nothing but f prime of x b uh, at the point b and not at point e. Remember, we choose the point that belongs to the curve, and we know that x b is zero. So f prime of x b means f prime of zero is going to be equal to uh, two. And what do we mean by f prime of zero is two? If we go back to f prime of x and we replace each x by zero, uh, we get from uh, this expression, we can state that b minus c is going to be equal to 2. But I know from the previous part that c is 1, so b minus 1 is 2, or b is 3. Now, we know from the second part that a minus b plus 1 is 0. If we replace b by 3, we get a is 2. So, uh, as a conclusion, we can say that a is 2, uh, b is 3, and c is 1. Uh, if we replace them, we get 2x squared plus 3x plus 1 e to the power minus x. Remember, we replace them in the original equation.